Hello, good afternoon, everyone who all are joining in and who may join later in the event. This is Himanshi Kaushik, your host of the day, and I heartily welcome you all in today's webinar on AI and data engineering in Industry 4.0, career pathways and growth opportunities. And I hope that you all are safe, sound, happy and healthy at wherever you're taking this webinar from. So before we learn a lot more about the opportunities and the career pathways we can have in AI and data engineering, we have our experts here with us. So I shall introduce you to our expert. We have Ms. Anamika Sharma. She, she is Senior Manager, Academics in Future Science Technologies. I'm so sorry, it is Future in Technologies. She is a proven academician with 10 plus years of diversified experience in education and corporate sector. She is an experienced assistant professor with a demonstrated history of working in higher education industry and a strong education professional with a master's of business administration focused in international business domain and data science using Python certification from IIT Roorkee. And uh, I heartily welcome you, ma'am, in the webinar. And okay, and I shall take Thank you, ma'am. Pleasure is ours, sir, uh, ma'am. And I shall take this moment to introduce our second expert, uh, Mr. Tamag Nakashi Bhatt. He is a project manager in Future Inst Technology. So, sir, I also welcome you in the webinar. And uh, now I would request Ms. Anamika Sharma to take over the screen. Ma'am, over to you. Hi, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hi, all. Very good afternoon to you. So, yeah, as ma'am explained, Himanshi explained to you that why we are here today. So discuss about the future ins opportunities, who future ins is, and to tell you about the more about the opportunities here in this are in a, in our program. So going forward, yes, first I'll talk about what future ins, who we are. Uh, Tamangna, can you please? Uh, yeah. So future ins is the you can see we are a talent company. Future ins as the godfather of ta talent. We call ourselves as godfather of talent which provides you a platform for talent to unlock its potential at zero cost. And when we are saying zero cost, that means you need not to pay anything here. That means you will be drawing salaries while training. Yes. So our career expanding ecosystem, finding you like a finding, supporting and inspiring potential talent enables business to connect with an untapped talent pool. This is our objective so that people from different cities, from different tier two, tier three, tier one cities, so that if you can get the opportunity and if you're ready to explore your ta talent in these domains, so we are here to provide you this type of environment. So this is VR. Uh, Tamangna, next slide. Is this a video, Tamangna? Uh, we... So, yeah. So now we'll show you one video. Uh, just let us know, please, if you're not able to hear or maybe if the audio is not proper or like you please let us know. So we are starting this video. So this video will give you an uh, overview of our structure that who is this Futurance Academy, why we are calling this Futurance Academy and who we are. Yeah. Tamangna, please start the video. Okay. Uh, so sorry. Uh, so audio is not available. I mean, audio is not audible here. We can let one me, second. We'll, let me we'll check, ma'am. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. So I think the best part of being a part of Future Ins Academy is actually when we get to see the outcomes and the real impact that we make in the lives of our Future Ins fellows. The Future Ins Academy is our sacred temple of learning where literally all the magic happens. As you see these young boys and girls enter this sacred place, you could see in their eyes, their faces, the desire, the passion, the determination to do something bigger, better and make something of their lives. So these talented folks actually have huge potential and you know it's really surprising to see what they can go and achieve out there. So we felt that they were really missing something, something or maybe someone more like a godfather in their lives. The moment these folks enter our facility, their evolution begins. We train them with an individualistic approach. Once they come in, we take a diagnostic assessment and a SWOT analysis for them, which reveals their strengths and weaknesses to us. We then tweak our training approach 
to best suit them. So one of the best moments that we have during any training is when we are working as a group and we are all stuck at a particular problem. Nobody is able to solve that. But then one of the guys goes Eureka and is able to come up with the solution. Now the entire group feels elated at that moment and this is one of the best experiences ever. So we all know how the EdTech works, right? Uh, in EdTech, they train the talent first and then deploy them. At Futurans, we work differently. What we do here is we go out to the business, get the requirements, then we brainstorm these requirements with our academic team to understand the must-haves, the non-negotiable skill sets. We design the entire curriculum and then we train this talent. Once they are trained, then is where we align the interviews and deploy these candidates. Once we get the requirement from the deployment team, we work backwards. The academics team sit down in a room and we brainstorm and we modify our curriculum to make it more client specific and train our candidates accordingly. This also enables us to design a lot of projects into simulation so that we can give a relevant hands-on industry experience to our candidates. After working closely with these engineers, what we have realized that being just technically sound is not enough. If we want a holistically developed talent, then skills pertaining to communication, pertaining to uh, interpersonal skills, presentation need to be given equal importance as well. I remember it was the second week of our training when we had given a small activity to these people. They had to work on a presentation. But what came to me as a surprise was the person who was topping the leadership board was the one who actually performed, uh, who actually did not perform well. When I saw him, he was very nervous the entire time. He was not able to articulate his sentences well and his body language was very closed off. Post the session, I decided to have a small conversation with him in order to understand what the problem was. He told me that he had a stage fright. So after that, we decided that even if that person is performing technically well, we have to ensure that behaviorally the same support is given to that person. We started working on his stage fright so that his confidence is being built on and he is able to deliver better. Last week when we had a conversation with our client, he told us the feedback which was given to us that this same person is the one who is now getting promoted to a project manager and will be leading a team of professionals. And this is the type of impact that we look for. This is the type of change that we want at Future Ends. I believe apart from training, what really makes us feel complete is the kind of bond we get to see. So these guys are like a group of best friends living their college life. The kind of relationship that they are building here, not just with each other, but with us too is really wholesome. So whether it's working on projects, participating in activities, or simply hanging out and having fun, this special connection has become an integral part of our culture. You know, the way we see it, these fellows are like diamonds. They came to us uncut, raw, and the hardships that they faced here, the pressures that they worked through here, made them valuable, both for themselves and for us. Eventually their success is what is our reward. They are like our family, the godfather of talents family. So yeah, this was a glimpse of our Futurins Academy life cycle. I think you must have understood that why we are calling ourselves as Futurins Academy. So we are not just a training company or a company who will deploy you. We are with you in this whole journey, throughout this journey that we are not just giving you training and we are not just teaching you the curriculum that what to tools and things are required in the market. In fact, we'll be there in the journey with help uh, to help you since the beginning till the end, you will get the deployment, you will get good opportunities in market, even on behavioral side, even on communication side. It's just not only what tech stack we are following or what tools we are focusing on. We will in this journey that how we can, if you feel, if you're stressed somewhere, if you're weak in some area, maybe communication, maybe challenges in some other area. So we'll be there in the journey throughout, like till you'll get the success in your career. So yeah, so next slide, Tamangna. So this is also one video. So yeah, uh, just have a look on this. Come. 
After these two videos, Futurins doesn't need any introduction uh, now. Like, uh, if I'll say anything about Futurins, I think, but these last two videos were enough to tell about the Futurins that who we are and how we are doing and how we are calling people here and training them. So yeah, this the last video is about the about the culture at Futurins that how we are working in a friendly environment and people are you can see people are really enjoying their working environment and they're like happily doing and working in a very chilling environment so although yeah we are calling ourselves at like futurins academy and gurukul but the environment here is not that very strict that you'll not get time for not get breathing space you'll get time for like even for fun activities on saturdays there will be some fun activities so it's not like yeah it's gurukul but not like in a very strict way that you'll not get time for fun and point not get time for to chill out yeah uh, next uh, slide so what is our goal as i told you that uh, to empower students with the knowledge of emerging technologies and make them ready for future and make them ready for the opportunities which are there in the market uh, depending on trends and dep depending on what tech stack is required in the market so obviously because we are updating our curriculum continuously based on market trends and market requirements so it's not that we are following a traditional curriculum like suppose in languages we are not like only teaching c c plus plus java only now the now people are asking about the python in even in lot of libraries and new packages every day adding in python now in fact microsoft fiber is coming so we are updating our curriculum in, from the perspective of all these requirements uh, coming from the market so and also we have an industrial tie up with futures technologies for these program with different uh industry we have a good industry pool of like leaders and thought leaders those who can come for master classes as well that we will tell you in detail in the upcoming slides uh tamagna move forward yeah key highlights of our, that we have a we are following a liberalized learning environment in accordance with the new new education policy uh liberalized learning learning when i'm saying liberalized learning that means we are involving subjects from different domain it's not that we are focusing only on core computer science and only on tech subject we are focusing on the subjects from different domain those who are required for engineer so that to make them ready for every type of requirement in future because it's just not that when you'll go and do job that you'll be just needing that you just required only the tech skills and the tech knowledge you would need to know the other market things also like sometimes like suppose if you're dealing with client you should know the consumer psychology you should understand about the consumer behavior you should know little about the front on the legal aspects you should know little about the finance also so in our curriculum we 
we are involving these type of subjects as well from financial background from marketing background like consumer psychology from digital marketing marketing background subjects like digital marketing design thinking that's why we are calling this whole environment as liberalized learning so we are not just focusing only on core and tech subjects uh, yeah the next key highlight of our program is three internships with stipend during the degree Yes, three internship, three training options will be there for you with stipend. That means these internships will be paid. So, yeah, you'll get you'll get the payment and you will be earning while these internship during your degree. The next highlight is this conditional letter of intent that you will getting you will be getting this opportunity from our company. But why we are calling this letter conditional letter of intent? Yes, there will be some there will be some conditions in this letter. You need to fulfill and you need to pass and you need to uh, match the standards as per the condition in this letter. Suppose, let's say your attendance parameter or maybe your end semester performance. So some uh, numbers will be there. You need to achieve those numbers in terms of attendance, in terms of uh, your semester percentages. So once you'll fulfill all these conditions in this letter, that you will be eligible to get all the offerings and opportunities from our end. The next key highlight of our program will be mentorship through global professors of practice and industry thought leaders, as I was talking about in the last slide as well. So we have a good pool of very good industry thought leaders and key practitioners from different backgrounds, from FMCG, from BFSI, those who can share their insights and their valuable experience from their domains and they can highlight and they can guide us that what will be our progression in future and how we can upskill ourselves and what demands and what things are in the market where we need to upskill ourselves. So these will be very uh, important sessions and very wonderful sessions will be there for you folks. Um, yeah, these were the key highlights of our program. Samagna, please move forward. So yeah, this industry 4.0, why we are referring to this like industry 4.0, because it refers to the integration of what advanced things are in the market, advanced technologies like AI, IoT, automation, robotics process automation, even revolutioning the manufacturing as well as production company. So it, it, it will give you a complete, it brings out a different paradigm shift in manufacturing with interconnecting systems, enabling the real time, what are the things required nowadays, analysis also, also on the decision making side, resulting in improved control and productive maintenances. So you can see this chart of industry 4.0 that simulations will be there, autonomous robots, system integration, IoT, even cybersecurity tools, and even tools from basic software tools like CATIA, AutoCAD, cloud computing, additive manufacturing, yeah. augmented reality, and also HFIS from big data and all will be there in this, yeah. Uh, next slide, Tamangna. <clears throat> now, D skills in this industry 4.0. So data integration will be there from data perspective. So we prepared a whole thing from the perspective of data. So yeah, AI is there in the market, AI and ML, but for to understand this whole pool of data science and AI and ML, in fact, the other things like NLTK, NLP and all the stuff in the this field, first we need to know the feature engineering that what are the tools required for data to understand this whole game of feature engineering? What tools, what things, what tech stack will be required? what things I should know from the visualization perspective, what should be a, a basic domain, like what should be a combo of a programming language and one tool from visualization side and one tool from the other ETL side, what things will be like there to enter to, to enter in this field. So data integration will be one thing, like first you will experience with tools like Informatica, Talent, Apache, NFP for data intelligence. Then data warehousing will come in picture, you know, from AW, from Amazon side, Redshift is there, Google BigQuery, and from Azure side, Microsoft Azure for building and managing data warehouses. These options are there. Some are paid, some are free, some are open source software, and some are obviously uh, paid softwares. Then data modeling will be there. Familiarity with tools like Studio, ERWIN, Lucid chart, all these for creating data models and help you in the structuring out the whole model to come up with the topology of the whole, the structure of that, uh, so that you can come up with a model and you can check the fitment of the model. If the fitment is fine, is it going with your requirement or not? Then the data pipeline development, knowledge of tools like Apache Airflow, AWS Glue. I told you that many products, many packages are there from Amazon side here in this. 
then data governance will come in picture once you'll model the data you'll come up with a topology then you need to see the data governance side as well for that also we have tools like colibra Aleton, apache atlas for all for this to check the how we are managing the data assets how we are governing them then in terms of quality assurance there will be some tools same the talent also provide data quality informatica also provide about the data quality so you can check the cleanliness of the data and the quality of data because nowadays we are getting and extract, extracting data from every source data will come to you in an unstructured form that is how you can converting and for the how you can preparing data for the other etl process so that we need to see how we can check and clean the cleanse the data then data streaming and real time processing so after doing the cleansing of the data how you can loading it in the system and how you what technologies you are using for the data streaming like there will be a full pipeline how will that data pipeline will be what will be the model of that data pipeline for that you will be uh, needing tools like apache kafka maybe these names are very new for you don't get scared we are just telling you that we are including all these relevant stuff in our curriculum this is just for to giving you an overview that these things are required in these particular domain and in this whole life cycle of the journey of data so uh, if you don't know these things please need not to uh, get scared of from the names of these all technologies and tools then on cloud side yes cloud is also important because after etl and data streaming and data modeling and pipeline development where you will actually store your data and what are the platforms which will help you the tools which help you in the data storing so on cloud side we have aws again i'm saying that amazon is offering so many products even on cloud side even on checking and the data quality side and one from the gcp like one from google gcp and from azure microsoft azure is there and then in terms of big data technologies hadoop ecosystem will be there hdfis apache spark apache hive pig yarn scar there are many tools which will help you in the big data technologies and then in the programming and scripting side, so there will be languages like, you know, this one very query language, which is very famous in the market, structured query languages is SQL. In that also we are covering, uh, as in the in the beginning stage, we'll be covering with MySQL. Later, based on the demands from the client, we can move to the Postgres SQL, we can move to the MySQL and Oracle SQL. So Python, Java, all these languages will be there along with the different updated libraries and packages in these environments and uh, languages and frameworks like pandas numpy pass spark sql alchemy for data manipulation analysis so this was a glimpse of that what skills we are using and we are covering in our curriculum in our in this whole training process uh among the next slide yeah so yeah this is about the market demand why we want to show you this that why these things are required in market and what is the actual demand of these tools and technologies in market and you should know the exact truth and the real picture that's and you so that you can decide and you can you can get to you'll get to know after this uh, jo after joining this program that suppose you are good at on, on the developing side are you a good coder are you a good programmer or maybe you are good in uh, visualizing the data so you can see and you can get to know that in which area you you are good at and you can decide based uh, on the market roles and based on the job roles and the opportunities available in the market so you can see in this whole uh, chart you can see the what is the percentage of data engineer here which is maximum at the highest so for that only i was explaining you the feature engineering part that why these these skills all this data manipulation data quality data governance all why all these things these things are important because this is something which is highly required nowadays in market as compared to the other tools like front-end developer or back-end developer or maybe senior data scientist or crm developer you can see different job roles here even related to directly related to some languages like python developer or java developer or android developer so feature engineering is something you should be aware of and you should know that so that you can get the best opportunities from the market so this was a glimpse of year over year growth and yes obviously uh, the ultimate aims is to get good package and to get good salary so this is our data to show you that how there is and what is the shift in the in terms of salaries like year year on year and like you can see that what is the salary graph in 0 to 3 years then 3 to 6 years then 6 to 10 share of professionals by years of experience, then median salary, you can see then median salary of data engineers by cities, 
So you can see this whole data that how the graph is rising and especially the on for the roles which we are talking about here, like data engineering and the roles related to data, not even for the backend developer in different languages. Here, the chances are like slightly on that very high here yeah, as compared to the other. So internships, as in key highlights, I told you about the internship that these internship, three internships will be there and all the three internships will be paid. So three stipend based internship during the uh, full four years of degree or four years of program. Internship will be for various job roles as per market demands. So yeah, if because as I told you that we are keep on like we are updating our curriculum on continuous basis depending on the market roles and depending on the opportunities and the uh, uh, things which are in trend in trend in market. So it will be aligned to different, different job roles. Like suppose after a, a training or after a common kind of path, then we'll get to know that suppose you are more interested on the developing side or you're a good programmer, you're a good coder. So we'll align you that type of training. Phase of training will be common for all. Then different project focused on AI, ML, DE domain. Yeah, so because projects is something really very important here because maybe once you do the interaction with the client. So after our training, you'll all get an interaction round with the client. Obviously client will also assess your performance that what you have learned till date and how much you know. So projects will be a very wonderful medium to tell you about, to tell them about your journey that what you have learned in this whole training program of some uh, uh, three, four months, three months and what you learned on the hands-on side. So this will be the best medium. So if you can tell the journey of your project, so our project will be based on these domains only, depending on the job roles. So it will properly, it will be perfectly aligned to your job roles, all the projects. So you can explain your journey that how you started this project. You can, in fact, an interview, it will be a great start if you can start with your project journey that what you have done, what tech stacks you have used, so that they'll get an idea that this much on you have worked on these many tools and technologies during your training program. Yeah, so next will be internship focus. So as I told you about the internship, now I'll tell you the exact uh, timing and exact uh, the, the tenure of all these internships. So first internship will be there after fourth semester. You can consider this in the at the end of the second year. So, and yeah, what job role specifies like in terms of competencies, data engineering competencies. So first we'll be focused on the, as I told you on the feature engineering parts, especially in the scripting side and the programming side. First we will train you and we will make you ready for the programming because that will help you in needing and achieving the other things, other requirements in a project. Second phase of internship, second internship will be at the end of the third year at sixth semester. This will focus in terms of competent competencies on ML side, machine learning competencies. Like how will you how will you train the machine to understand your uh, commands? What will be the algorithms? How will you develop these mathematical algorithms? And what are the different tools and libraries which will help you in understanding the machine? Like these will be the commands and these will be the algorithms from my end. And this job or this work I want to achieve through this particular project or something. Suppose you're working on a business problem, you're working suppose on a any, on a hypothetical business problem or any uh, real-time business scenario. Then the next internship will be, uh, the last internship uh, will be at the end of the fourth year in your uh, seventh semester, because I think we got to know the eighth semester is the placement semester and you'll be maybe uh, busy in that. So the last semester in terms of competencies, we'll be focusing on the data engineering and AI job roles that what are the job roles in market related to these field will train you as per the JDs that what are the requirements. Suppose on SQL, you studied SQL, but now in JD, they need to Postgre SQL or Oracle SQL. So what will be the difference in the command from Postgre SQL to MySQL or SQL? Or suppose same in the D uh, side. So you know Python, Java, SQL, but suppose they have a requirement of Scala or maybe in Python side about the beautiful soup or some these special type of packages or if they have some special demands. You as per the job roles and the job competencies available in the market. Yes, next slide, Tamangna. So this is a tech stack. So uh, we are just, uh, we, can, you, we can show you a glimpse of our projects like what tools and what technologies we are using here, text stack in different project. You can see, suppose this project is about the loan eligibility prediction that who are the defaulters in my, suppose I want to know and I want to 
fault us in my this project so you can use mustack or through gcp through in this so you can see on programming side we are using python on package side we are using numpy from python jupyter notebook pandas sky scikit learn xgboost and data management side suppose how will you create the databases how will you manage the databases with mysql dbms and sql queries and obviously cloud side storing side and governance side you will be using gcp same you can see another etl project like using aws and it is spark and elk stack language again python package can be pyspark then apache spark you can see amazon emr clusters so amazon even redshift aws is providing us many beautiful libraries and packages that you can use even on the data governance quality and the uh, managing side so other example is web server log processing using hadoop and azure suppose the tech stack can be here because you'll be focusing here on the because web server means you'll be live you need to know the data streaming here how my pipeline will be so you can see here instead of python we are using scala and on same on the services side we are using microsoft and hadoop ecosystem hive and spark so these are not like very hard and fast obviously because every project in itself is a very different requirement so you can achieve the same result through different languages as well through different tool tools as well it depends on you how much you have learned and how fast you are and what uh, different what beautiful tech stack you can bring it to the table yeah the manga next slide uh yeah then this is the course highlights emerging tools and technologies that what different and what are the uh, you can see the key skills of data engineering that which what is the demand of which particular language and over the years which tool is more in demand which is in less in demand which programming side is stopping in the market and on maybe on the visualizing side which tool is coming up in the market and which is you can get to know that after like so which one is paid and which one is not paid so you can see uh, languages here like python then query languages ql data visualization even in deep learning in neural network you will get the complete understanding of deep learning and obviously the tensor flow keras and all these system that how you can run and you can use actually these system then apache kafka for the data streaming analysis then no sql databases like suppose uh, we no sql databases means the data when we have when we got unstructured data when we have unstructured data we can directly jump into the sql and mysql but we when we have no like unstructured data then obviously we need to come up with different tech stack different tools so in market for unstructured data no sql databases we have different tools like mongodb cassandra neo4j and obviously you will get a exposure of natural language processing here with computer vision and image processing nowadays you know facebook even twitter all these are using all this computer vision and image processing so that all you'll get to know in detail the understanding and knowledge of all these uh, important fields yeah the magna next slide then learning outcome that what are the outcome from our this training and from this whole uh, journey and from all of this effort which we are trying to put in, in and build skills in industry 4.0 emerging and exponential technology and also how we can apply these data engineering techniques and methodology to like to come up with a better result like how what market needs and how we are delivering it how are, how we are filling that gap which is required in market and develop that proficiency in data collection processing and programming languages that is our main like what is required in the market and how we can fill that gap uh, apply analysis predictions obviously optimization even in on finance side like cost optimization type of decisions or decision making and developing skills in order to formulate and solve complex business problem even in multiple disciplines like how you can work in real scenarios and how you can be strong and hands on so that is our main and prime objective it's not that we are just teaching you tools and languages and in 3 4 months and 3 months you'll just get to know that how you need to run the python uh, libraries in jupyter notebook no it's the target is and the objective is that how you can lead a python project in future be an ethical and socially responsible professional yes uh, obviously and engage in so that learning and developing an entrepreneurial mindset so this is our mantra to make you as not only as entrepreneurs like a technopreneur we are we have this term why we are calling it technopreneur so that we can make you ready with technical skill as well as entrepreneur skills so that you can take and lead things in life it's not just you'll be working life your throughout your life as a techie only or as a coder or a programmer only how you can come up with decision how you can take decision better decisions in your career life so that you can lead to managerial and uh, the higher roles in future yes namanga next slide so this is the conditional letter of intent i was talking about in the beginning 
so what is first this letter i'll ex again one more time i'll explain you in detail that this letter this the candidate enrolled in this program will be provided this letter conditional letter of intent this loi is conditional and subject to prevailing economic conditions and resource requirement of the industry that is what is required in the market the joining date assignment of work nature of work and work location are the sole prerogative of the industry the candidates who satisfy this line is very important the candidates who satisfy all the condition under this loi will be eligible to sit for a placement and for that those conditions i already told you that these conditions can be related to your attendance through in the program in the that semester or maybe at the end of the degree or maybe your end semester exam the whole your score in that degree there will be some conditions okay that once the letter will reach to you you'll get to know yeah yes the yeah the important question is why futurins why only futurins yes as al although we i already told you about our expertise the environment at futurins but yes we'll show you that how we have done how much we have done till so far so 18 plus cohorts of futurins fellow successfully deployed so we have a good and a very great pool of our fortune 500 clients where we are deploying our candidates so we have almost like successfully run our 18 plus cohorts real time industry experience with three stipend based internship i don't know i am not comparing to other programs but i don't know where you will get this type of experience real time experience with three internship in a degree of four year an internship doesn't mean that you'll just go and you'll just go in training and you'll just know about some tech stack here you'll be working on hands on things you will come to know you'll see you'll come in throughout the course of the four years and earn the, uh, the the special thing is that you will be able to earn while learning earn the right work experience while you learn so i think this is something very unique which we don't know we have not experienced this in our uh, time in our study time when we were studying and we were doing our these studies so yeah then get mentor mentored by global professors of practice so we have a pool of industry thought leaders and we are calling it pop professors of practice those who have expertise in different domain and can come up and add value in our uh, learning in this journey become job ready professionals with futurins so that is our target so then work on real time projects with emerging technologies and become future proof so the ultimate is goal is to make you ready for future to make you ready for market to make you ready for the jobs and the you should be ready for all the opportunities in the market depending on obviously depending on your interest and in which field you want to work and you want to leverage your experience but this is our thing because our whole model depends on the candidates and all the students our business model is depends on students only if we'll not train you properly obviously will not the futurists will not be able to earn and because the whole our revenue model based on students performance only so that is our prime uh, like objective to make you ready for the future opportunities and to make you ready properly for the opportunities in the market we are the magna next slide so yeah this is uh, a glimpse of some professors uh, from our global pool as i was telling you that we have a pool of industry thought leaders some program architects you can see few names here so dr prashant southkale from like dbp institutes he's founder and managing principal anish merchant he's global business head digital applied ai and researcher at course five intelligence dr atul tripathi he is a specialist in big data and national security council secretary in pmo new delhi then we have dr ganesh mani from pittsburgh school he is also in this field ai and d and kagi menon he is working as an adjunct faculty there then we have from ai only as an expert like uh, ceo of uh, one second i am not able to my screen got stuck tamangna can you help me with this uh, do you want me to am i see? audible uh, yes yeah now yes, i can sir. see now i can see yeah you can see samir anjani that from fractal analytics he is also a leading entrepreneur in this ai field only and then you can see dr sarabjot singh co founder and chief data scientist from tetris data ai so all these folks are from this field only they are the leaders and the masters they know actual market they know the demand in market they know how we can lead and successfully make our few careers in this uh, domain next slide tamanga so you can see a glimpse of our futurins office here in bangalore 
so you can see we have a very wonderful office here in bangalore uh, silicon valley you can see the training rooms you can see the auditorium so that it's not that uh, yeah we are calling ourselves gurukul and academy so we have that arrangement in at our office so that you can get you'll get the good environment for studying and like to um, enjoy your tenure here yeah yeah this is our delhi office you can say this we are calling the state of art training facility you can see the the beautiful office with different architectures you can see on the walls and so so that you'll get the complete atmosphere of the positive learning environment and all the stuff yeah so I'm going to move on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it from our end. So any will be happy to uh, take any questions if you guys have any questions, please. Yeah. Uh, before we go on to the questions, I'd like to thank you for coming in for uh, giving this presentation. Of course, I mean, it has been an insightfully and informative um, presentation. So thank you so much. And thank you, sir, thank you, uh, for coming in here and uh, joining us. So um, can we move to the questions that we've got from yeah, sure, sure, participants? Sure. Uh, so this question came from Kristen Sequeria and it says, can you provide any guidance for me? I want to build my AI project or portfolio. So what I need to do? Yeah, definitely we can provide you after the training and after once you'll finish this whole degree and training, first you should know all this, these tools, techno technologies and programming languages which are required so that you can put good things in your portfolio first you should understand and you should study all these things and obviously we'll help you on that that side as well that how you can come up with a good portfolio to come up and to lead like have success in this failure uh, Tamak, sir, do you want to add anything to it i think that pretty much covers what um you know anamika has said and i think there's gautam who has raised his hand Gautam, if you can hear us, you can go ahead and ask your query. Um, Gautam, also we can allow you to talk. If you're if you're present here, you may just okay, just a moment. If you're present here, you may just raise your hand so that we know, and then we can allow you to talk. So, uh, meanwhile, sir, can we go to the second question that we have uh, from the registrants here? So this question is from Vesh Sinha and it says, are there any entry-level positions available in future? Ends? Okay. Entry-level positions in future? Ends, I didn't uh, get the question. So I'll explain you one more time. So what opportunity we are providing you here? So we are calling you at future Ends just for training. So future Ends is an ed tech company, a training company, a talent company company which will train you but yeah you will get the job at the client side to the different clients with different like companies we have a pool of fortune 500 companies so later in the later stage you'll be the employee of the client with that fortune among the pool of that fortune 500 companies you will be the future employee till only for 11 months later we will deploy you to the client side okay so the yeah the uh, level if you if you ask about the level of roles so obviously because you will be graduate only so the uh, roles will be like data engineer only not like senior data scientist or senior data engineer but yes we are not giving you job at future we will deploy you to the different clients after our training hope i'm clear now yeah. So, Vesh, I think you need to join us here as an, a lovely professional university and then, yeah. you, know, then you can directly uh, have a contact with Futurance and, and after that you can get your training and then uh, work wherever you want to. Yeah, yeah. So, um, then, then this question is next question from Moti Gupta. So, it says, are there any specific certifications for students interested in AI and data engineering? Interested certificates, okay. So obviously in these internships, you will get certificates after finishing these internships, you will get some recognition or you will get some letter that you have completed these three internships with Futurance. And obviously we will guide you about the other different uh, platforms in market. Suppose you are a student who is more interested on the cloud side. So maybe as a cloud trainer, I can tell you that there are many Azure certificate from Microsoft uh, and are there in the mic 
product market like Microsoft certified expert in some Azure package or maybe some uh, cloud certifications from Google, GCP, Google Cloud uh, certifications and some from different partners. So obviously we'll guide you as a mentor, as a trainer. You can do that certificate and you can become an expert in cloud. Suppose you're interested in cloud. So that mentoring will also be there. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, ma'am. I think the question was, uh, I mean, is there any specific certifications that students can do who are interested in AI and data engineering? I think. So uh, there are no other certifications, ma'am, except from our training. So they'll be doing training with us. So the certification, whatever the letter will be there, that will be from our brand itself because we are not partnered with other brands on this side so that we can provide students to this type of opportunity that they can do certifications from other platforms as well. We can help them in getting enrolled to other platforms, yeah. but yeah. yes, from other platforms, we can't bring in, we can't bring in here. Okay, so basically Moti, it's, it's I think again, very simple. You come in here, you join Futurance and then you can get a lot more of the certificate that you want to. And with this, ma'am, we have our last question from Minhaj Hilal. And it says, can you give examples of real world projects where AI and data engineering work hand in hand? Yeah, as I showed you a glimpse of some project, like suppose loan prediction, like suppose I want to know the default touch list who has not submitted pr properly, maybe the premium or the amount. And I showed you other example also. And nowadays, suppose chat GPT is in there. So how this particular thing, how these different tools in helping us in uh, coming up with medical diagnosis, even diabetes prediction, there are multiple problems in different, different scenarios in maybe in BFSI sector, different problems in FMCV sector, different business problems. So obviously, you will be working on the so you know that extracting real-time data sets and real-time data from companies is a task nobody no companies share their real data but yeah the companies which allowed and we if we can get some data so we are giving you those data sets only so that you'll get to know the actual situation in market and you can work on the data sets which are already like uh, the available the existing data sets in market yeah Okay, um, so i think we're done with the questions and i am again requesting anyone uh, Gautam, if you're here, uh, you had raised your hand, right? So if you're here, we can allow you to talk. You can just raise your hand. And uh, if there's any other question, you may post in Q&A box or chat box. And if not, uh, then I take permission from our experts here to wrap this webinar up, sir. If you do not want to add anything to the webinar or conclude it. Magna, would you like to conclude with something if I missed out some, uh, yeah, some information? No, that's it. I think we have pretty much covered the USPs throughout uh, you know, the presentation. I think it's pretty much clear that what we are actually offering for this program, basically the three stipend-based internships, along with the conditional letter of intent and with mentorship by the global professors of practice and industry experts, these are our main, you know, uh, what we can see the value propositions that set us apart from other, you know, the other partners and as such. And I think uh, one more thing to to just add is that we just take care of the training outcomes uh, you know, very strictly. So we take care of regular student feedbacks and you know both from the trainers and then from the students and we compare both of them and then. You know, we have a detailed call in order to improve the student experience throughout the journey with us. So that detailed personalized care is something that we take for each and every student who are enrolled in our program. So that's something that sets apart from our competitors. It's something which I wanted to add. So from for this, I think uh, the students might have gotten uh, pretty much of a clarity on our program. So with this, I conclude, you know, the session. So once you can so, take forward. Okay, uh, ma'am, Anamika, ma'am, are you saying something? Yeah, so I would just yeah, same thing as Tamagna was telling. So we'll be in this journey with you throughout the whole uh, whole tenure of your training. And so we'll not leave you behind. Even if you don't want to work, we'll be with you to make you ready. <laughs> you want to or not, but yeah, we'll make you future ready and for the jobs and the opportunities in the market. Okay, so thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for coming in here, for joining uh, and for giving the students uh, a navigation, a path through that uh, they can just maybe become future ready. And I would want to thank all the participants, of course, for coming in here, for joining. And the, all the questions that you've sent are really, really appreciated. Now, if you have missed any of this part, uh, any of the part of this uh, particular session, this will be uploaded on YouTube and on our site as well. So you can uh, just explore it there. 
so with this i take leave and until next webinar thank, thank you. you thank you thank you so thank much thank you guys see you soon thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.